I wouldn't say. You know, the choice plays no part in, in determining someone's health status. But these individual lifestyle factors are a small bit. And the big bit is what's happening in the socioeconomic, cultural and environmental conditions. If you want to improve people's health status, and we do, you need all of those sectors to be working to deliver great health outcomes, and you have to be empowering those marginalised communities. Sometimes government identifies, OK, here's a marginalised community, <coughs> rocks up to that community and says, well, we've got a fantastic solution for you. Well, that's usually not going to work because government will usually get it wrong. They won't understand how that community works. So the better model is a partnership model that says we would like to be your partner in working out what the problems are and in resourcing you to find solutions to those. Clearly, if we're going to work across that spectrum of, of determinants of health, we need government departments to be working together. Schools kind of already are the hub of the community. I mean, many people in the community have a direct relationship through their kids or their grandkids. So let's use that fact to, to deliver more government services, to coordinate more services through the school. Let's resource that process. And let's provide free after school holiday care, free school lunch program, free school nurse, and so on. To provide this, in every decile one to four school in New Zealand would cost about $100 million a year. I think I've spent um, probably about $250 million tonight, which would be paid for more than four times over by the tax cut alone. Think about those two New Zealands. Mm -hmm.